Okay, so uh, welcome back. <laughs> um, so we're going to start so this afternoon for the next two hours. So we are uh, uh, welcoming um, Florence and Catrice. Uh, so Florence is, uh, I would say, a, a leading voice in the uh, political French political economy galaxy. And uh, in terms of, she is professor of economics at, uh, at the University of Lille, so northern France. And uh, in terms of research, she focuses on, I would say, uh, industrial economics and, for instance, the growth of services. And also, uh, there is much of her research uh, uh, with the categorization measurement problems in uh, economics and statistics. And so uh, it's going to be uh, for today, it's a, a typical example and a very uh, topical issue because she's going to talk about the uh, um, political economy of measurement inflation. So as always, France is going to talk for one hour and then we'll have, uh, we have, uh, tell me if I'm right, Shrinis Kittens once again, Elarif Vela, yeah, okay, Elarif Vela, Otto, and Wen Jong. Okay. Okay. okay, perfect. So, uh, and we need to end up at about in two hours, right? Okay. okay, yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Antoine. I thank you also, David, uh, uh, for inviting me, having this talk with you. And as, as Antoine has said, I'm full professor at the University of Lille. The University of Lille is the biggest university in France in terms of the number of students who are there, 75,000 students, um, excluding the Catholic, Catholic University. And if you take the two universities all together, we have more than 120,000 students at Lille. So it's a very youth, youth uh, city and, and university. And I'm, I'm part of this uh, research center, which is Clercé, uh, uh, Centre Lillois d'études et de recherche sociologique et, et, et économique. So it's, it, it tries to, to favor a discussion between economics, e economists and, and sociologists and anthropologists. And probably you will see this in my talk. I'm at the same time, I'm, I'm not sure to be one of the leading voices of, of a political economy in France, but I, I am really fond of the, uh, the dialogue between economists and sociology, and I think that this is really, really heuristic to understand something concerning economy. So, uh, I have been told to present to you uh, some element of the, my, my, my latest book, um, A Political Economy of the Measurement of Inflation, The Case of France and Beyond. And I will try not to go beyond one, one hour so that we can have this conversation, which, is, uh, uh, which you have to, to organize on your, on your side, but which I, I, I'm really uh, expecting from you because I, 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 th I think it's really int interesting and more interesting to, to have this conversation together instead of, of, of having you listening to me um, one way. So uh, I decided to shorten a bit what I had in mind and present you something in three parts. So my outline is has below. So what, defi what definition of inflation um, um, can be presented here? Because what I will be interested in here is the measurement of this concept of inflation, right? So everyone is okay with the focus of my presentation, the measurement of inflation as a research topic in a way. Um, the second part of my presentation will be, um, uh, 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 I will insist on the fact that all measurements in socioeconomics are always sociopolitical constructs and I will try to explain you why, and I will also try to give some, some effects of the fact that it is always a sociopolitical construct. And I will then finish with the idea of the coexistence of two logics, to my point of view, which is sort of, a, of the thesis I try to defend in my book and uh, the previous papers. Uh, two logics, a logic of uh, representation on the one hand and a logic of what matters and what counts on the other. 
right? Is that okay for you? Yeah? Okay. You're, you're all looking at your computer, but I, exp I, I suppose you're listening to me, right? Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, that's the new way of, of teaching. You never know who is listening to you because no one is, is, is just looking at you. So <laughs> it's very strange. Okay. Uh, so first point, what definition of inflation is in a way taken, taken when dealing with the question of, of measurement of inflation? And, and what I want to stress on is the fact that uh, scholarly definitions, I mean uh, academic definitions of, of any macroeconomic concept, but especially uh, concerning inflation, are always embodied in indicators. I mean, if you try to, uh, to, to, to think about it, there are very, very few macroeconomic reasonings. I don't say that there are no, but there are very few macroeconomic reasoning which are not rea relying explicitly on the official data, on the official index. And, and in a way, they are, they are doing as if the, uh, the index itself was the concept. And I think that there is a strong difference between the index and the concept. Second point, inflation is, is always expressed and measured by the CPI, Consumer Price Index. So if you see somewhere CPI, it means that it is the official measurement of inflation for any country. I will give a few examples and, and probably uh, also uh, uh, later concerning other countries. And in, in the case of France, it's an index produced by the INSEE, which is the, uh, offi um, the Office of, of, of National Statistics for France. So either I say ONS or I will say INSEE. In both cases, it's, it's the French National Statistics Office, right? And uh, in, in for instance, in the United States, uh, it is the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is in charge of uh, producing and measuring the inflation and the CPI. Um, the, the generic the sort of generic definition, which is a statistical definition, in, in the case of the uh, inflation and in the case of CPI, is the fact is, is, is the following one. It is the change in the price of a basket of goods and services representative of household consumption. Right? So this is the meaning of the CPI and somehow it is also the meaning of inflation. Although we know, we all know that inflation is normally something which should take into account the fact that there is a sort of a general increase of all prices to be the meaning of inflation. But, but, but in fact, we always take for granted the fact that the CPI is normally regarded as, as, as a measure of the change in the price of a basket of goods and services representative of the household consumption. But what is interesting, and which I did not have in mind before I started my research, is the fact that this definition has changed over time. And has, I think I would say drastically changed. And, and it has changed together with changes in the measurement methodology. Which, or, which again gives you a, 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 a link, a very close link between the way we measure and the concept which is supposed to be measured. So what do I have in mind with the changes in the measurement methodology? I could say methodologies uh, using the plural. First, if I take the, a very long history, I won't, I won't go back to the reasons why there has been a willingness, public and governmental willingness, to produce the first uh, uh, CPI in France in 1913. But it's an interesting historical uh, 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 um, uh, um, uh, uh, discussion that we may have. So in 1913, um, the, the, the inflation measurement was based on a basket of 13 everyday consumer goods. So you had only 13 goods within the basket. And it was representative of a working class, or, or say blue color, uh, household in the Paris region. 
Why 13? Because they were representative of the what what was regarded as being uh, uh, a necessi necessity goods in a way, and why the blue colors? Because they were the the, the household who fought at that time, and so there was a public response, direct response to to the to the revolt, to the to the to the to the, to the fight that they had uh, uh, concerning their purchasing power, and why the Paris region? Just because the uh, the SGF, which is the ancestor of the INSEE, had just no means. And it was f far easier for him, or for it, for this institution, to have access to the Parisian households instead of going everywhere on, on, on any territory of France. So sometimes you have some pragmatic reasons that may explain why you have this choice uh, uh, over another one. And in 1913, uh, the, the idea was already to take, um, to have a methodology using a last pair index. So I don't know how, how used you are, you are with the statistical issues concerning the, 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 the index theory, but the last pair is just the idea of using, the idea is to take the 13 goods, to take the variation of prices over time of these 13 goods, and to put a weight on each of these variation, and which weight, the, consume, uh, the, the budgetary coefficient that is in the basket of goods. So for instance, if the rent represents half of the basket of goods and expenses, then the budgetary coefficient will be of, of 15 50%, OK? I'm very surprised because I, uh, is that OK? Yeah? OK, OK. Uh, and 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 why last pair? Because it's the it's, it's the budgetary coefficient of the based year, and we also use an, uh, uh, the arithmetic um, um, the arithmetic mean, arithmetic average, and not another one which I will use later, which is the geometric one. Okay, I won't do a statistic. Uh, who is last pair? Is uh, British, French? Or um, who is Lasper? From from where is? Yeah. I mean, you have Lasper and Pash. I would say that both are from UK, okay. but 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 I might be wrong. So okay. so you you may tell me, and I think that it's, okay. I and I'm I think it's in the first chapter of my book. But okay. but I just wrote it because it was compulsory to write it down. But I I, I don't remember. I mean Lasper, no. But the the work of Lasper was during the 19th century. So so okay. it, it was well, not at that I period of time. It's, it's Lasper on the on the one hand and Sp and Pash on the other yeah. hand. From? No. Oh, sorry, sorry about, uh, about that, so from Germany. So at that time, in 1913, using the last pair, okay, index, the idea behind this measurement was the fact that inflation was the change in expenditure to have access at a fixed basket of goods. A fixed basket of goods, and the idea of the Fixity is very important. The idea is just to take into account the, the price variation. So if you have in your basket two oranges and, and, and one uh, and, and, some, and, and, and a kilo of coal, the, the next time you want to measure it, it should still have two oranges and one kilo of coal. So fixed in terms of quantity, but also fixed in terms of quality. And this obviously is something very tricky today. So, and, and in, in, the, in the literature, you may, see it, uh, uh, you may see it mentioned as a COGI, so cost of good index. So that's another way of, uh, of, of uh, speaking about the, the, the CPI. The CPI normally is measured as a COGI cost of good index, so the, the, the cost of a basket of fixed goods within um, and, 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 the, and its variation over time. So that's, that's the first uh, year where the, the, the inflation was measured by the French government and then, and by the statistics, official statistics. And then after eight different um, uh, waves of, of transformations, Obviously, I, I won't have time to, 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 to say something concerning e each of these steps, 
But now, in, in 2017, you have in the basket of goods and services more than 1,100 varieties, which mean different goods and services within the basket. So it's a far bigger basket than it used to be. Every month, each month, you have more than 400,000 prices that are collected by, by uh, civil servants of the national statistics. And normally, it's supposed the, the, this, this CPI is supposed to cover not anymore the, uh, the, the necessity goods, but the average consumption of an average consumer. So almost 98% of all the consumption is supposed to be uh, captured in, in, in the index, okay? So that's one point. And then, ah, oh, this is, okay. So what is interesting is the fact that now uh, this, this basket of goods is not representative of, of a working class household, but it's now representative of the average co consumer. And this is obviously something very important today and that may explain part, to what extent I don't know, but part of the reasons why the perception of the, of, of the people is very different. There is a huge gap between the perception of the people concerning the inflation and the official uh, in inflation measurement itself. Because, because at, at that time, let's say in the 70s, when, uh, when the average consumer was taken as the uh, aim or the objective, uh, there was still an idea of, of equality for the society. But now with the higher, with the greater heterogeneity, with the greater inequalities between the households and the social classes, Obviously, the idea of hi having an, uh, um, an average uh, inflation may not speak to anyone anymore, right? The last reform concerning the, 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 the price index, or the, the CPI, was introduced in France in 2020. It was a, a very bad, bad idea. Or, but at the same time, a good idea to introduce it that year because uh, it was during the, the lockdown of the country, during uh, uh, the, the COVID period. And, and, and obviously, the, the INSEE had difficulties in collecting every month the prices because there were uh, no, no exchanges anymore concerning what happened in the hypermarket, supermarket, etc. But at that time, they had decided to do a drastic reform. So now you still have normally one... 1,100 varieties of goods, you have uh, price collections, but you also have uh, scanned data which are collected directly from the hypermarkets uh, with a sort of a exchange of data. So now you have the introduction of the big data in the, in the price index measurement, right? So this, the introduction of the big data means that you have more than 80 million price records scanned every month which are collected and, 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 and sort of uh, computed and put in something that is normally regarded as being close to the last pair index, normally. But what is important is to, is to understand that from, from the year 2000 and onward, I would say that uh, all the different uh, reforms concerning the CPI have uh, led to the, to the fact that now we don't exactly have a last pair index, but we have a sort of a hybrid of a last pair type, as I say, with really multiple, multiple derog derogations concerning the fact, concerning the, the ideal t type of, of last pair index. First derogation that occurred during the 70s, the fact that we use now a chain in this instead of a of a transformation of the, of the basket of wood every five years, the transformation of the composition of the basket occurs every year. The second one is the fact that we use, I mean the official statistic use geometric averages, geometric means instead of arithmetic means, which, is, which has a very huge uh, um, uh, consequence on which I will come back later. And it also uses consumer profiles, etc., etc. What I want to stress on is the fact that 
this, all these uh, derogations tend arithmetically to pull the uh, inflation down. So I mean, if if they had no should should uh, if if there had not been any reform over time, the inflation would be far higher than it is now. And if you don't trust me, I will give you some proofs of this concerning other countries because concerning France, it's it's a bit touchy to have uh, to have um, uh, the, the the different uh, data. But now, and this is something which is uh, more or less uh, accepted by the INSEE itself. Inflation is not anymore regarded as being a COGI change in expenditure to access a fixed uh, basket of goods, but it's now regarded as a COLI. COLI means a cost of living index. So now, more or less, the inflation is regarded as being a cost of living index, but obviously there is something very tricky because uh, what is a life? Maybe we can have a discussion concerning what is a life. But, and, and moreover, uh, uh, inflation is def defined as being the evolution of income to reach the same level of utility despite price increases. So there is the idea of transforming the idea of fixed basket of goods by something which, which would be a fixed level of utility. So there is a sort of a huge transformation and obviously now the, the framework is directly the framework of the microeconomics of consumer and the neoclassical one, which is really the framework of the statistical offices today. Although during that period of time, it was more, more or less, even if it was a bit pragmatic, more or less something that was closer to, we may say something which might have been regarded as being Keynesian. So inflation measurement has undergone over time, over these hundred years of times, countless reforms, often undertaken very discreetly, especially in the case of France. So for instance, as I was telling you earlier, switch to the geometric average, switch to the, the scan data, the use of consumer profiles, especially to try to tackle the question of telecommunication, mobile phones, uh, etc., and the quality treatment. So I just give you some ideas and, and I will come back to these later. And, and these reforms have been accelerated since 1996 um, on the ground of a report called the Boskin Report, written and, and published in the United States, when um, the, the federal governor asked Boskin who can be regarded as being a neo neoclassical, uh, to not, to f not to try to figure out to what extent or if, if there would be an underestimation or overestimation of inflation uh, compared to the official inflation uh, uh, index. But, the, but Boskin was asked to measure uh, the, under the overestimation of inflation. So concern, um, okay, I just, so that was, that was a key period, but I will come back to that uh, hopefully later. And, um, and, and what is important also to, to understand is the fact that when there is a reform concerning the change in the measurement of inflation, it is automatically validated by Eurostat. So France does not have really to ask for the permission to do a reform so long the difference in the measure between before and after the reform does not exceed 0 0.3 points, uh, points of, of, okay. So if you have an inflation with 1%, 0 0.3 point means one third of the inflation, almost one third, okay. If you have 6%, obviously 0 0.3 points is not important. But all the reforms have been undertaken during a period of very low inflation regime. So what we don't exactly know is what would have happened if these reforms had taken place during a high regime period, would the difference between before and after the reform have just uh, uh, con uh, led to, to a 0 0.3 difference or less? Or would, would it have been one-third of the inflation? 
So one third of inflation, when you have 6% of inflation, makes a difference of 2%, two, two, two points, so that's far more. And this is also something on which we don't have many, many information about. But I, 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 I hope you will understand why I insist on this element later. So let me now come back, come to my second point. I want to stress on the fact that measurement is a social, uh, socio-political construct. All the history of the measurement of inflation shows that this measurement is at the same time a collective cognitive device, which means that you really need this device and this measurement to coordinate the actors together. For instance, if you want to negotiate an increase in the wage, the first thing that you look at is what is the inflation rate? Because if, if the inflation rate is about 6%, you will first ask for at least 6% to maintain your purchasing power. So in the inflation measurement, the index, the CPI, is a very, very decisive collective cognitive device. And at the same time, the history shows also that it has been the result of really, really many, many struggles and conflict. Not only struggles and conflict because there is inflation, but struggles and conflict about the measurement of inflation. And, and what is interesting is the, fa is the fact that these struggles and, 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 and conflicts have been carried by different actors over time. The, the first, the major, one of the major and the very first uh, struggle concerning the measurement of inflation occurred in the 50s in France. And two actors faced, were facing each other, the state on the one hand and the National Statistic Office on the, on the other hand. The idea was for the government to uh, to directly to intervene in the composition of the basket of goods and in the price of the goods that were inside the basket to maintain the basket at the same price. So we could call it a uh, politique du chiffre, a uh, uh, sort of a, of a number po uh, uh, Po policy, um, number policy or something like that, which means that the government was not really fighting against the phenomena of inflation, but it was fighting against the number itself. He wanted, he wanted to remain or to maintain the, the, the data as flat as possible. And, and this is the reason why in France now the composition of the basket of goods and services is completely secret. You have absolutely no access to how it is composed, what it is composed of, and where the uh, collection of, 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 of prices are done, etc. You have some indication, but not direct indication, contrary to uh, almost all countries. And this, culture, this secret culture, in a way, is really, linked, is, is really linked to this very, very difficult and, uh, and conflictual uh, period of time in the 50s and 60s. It was also a period of very high inflation regime. But, but at the other period of times, you had also uh, f fights and struggles and conflicts between trade unions and the national office, or between consumer associations and the national offices, or between some alternative experts and the uh, national offices. Sometimes you also have experts who sort of a, a propose alternative uh, way of measuring inflation. And in my book, I identify five periods. This five period is the, the first one, states versus National Statistical Office during the 50s and 60s. Let's say it's more, more precise than 40s and 50s. During the 40s, there was no, no fight, so it should be I should have written 50s and 60s. And then a second period on which I will focus later, a, f a strong conflict between trade unions and INSEE with the production of an alternative index by the major trade union CGT, uh, which also was uh, regarded as a tr traumatic period for the national statistics itself institution. A third period on which I won't focus much is the post boskin period era from the 1916, 1996 onwards. 
The shift to Euro is also a period of time where at the same time, um, in all the Eurozone countries, uh, the, 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 there, has been a, a, there have been different struggles. Huh. OK, sorry. Non, j'avais plus de batterie, mais c'est bon, c'est revu. Je pense que j'avais, c'était pas bien branché. OK, the shift to Euro is a period of time where, where there, there has also, also been a lot of struggles on which I will come back. And the, the last one I will conclude on, on this later because it's more a, sort of a prospective with this new inflation regime we are experiencing. There is probably something which is um, underway, which I, I am trying to qualify as being a multiplication of the computing centers, but I will uh, probably insist on that uh, during the, uh, as a conclusion. Now, as I told you, um, I, I won't go through all these periods. You may find some of the elements uh, in, in, in the book. But I would like to insist on some of the factors of the controversies, the, factor of the factors of the struggles, the factors of the conflicts. Why have there been so many conflicts over time uh, concerning uh, uh, these elements? Um, first, uh, first reason is the fact that it's, it's amazing to notice how many uses the inflation measurement uh, has. Because this index is, is really, really very much examined. As, as the national office says, it is the, by far the most examined uh, in, um, indicator, macroeconomic indicator, far more than uh, than the unemployment, far more than, than growth, far more than GDP, far more than, than debt, far more than poverty rate, etc., etc. The, the, what is the most uh, observed uh, on, the, on the website of INSEE is inflation. Why? Because it is really a determining element of the purchasing power. As you know, you have two elements, the, the wages and income on the one hand and inflation on the other hand. It's an indexation of retirement pension, at least in France, so long Macron was not at the head of the, of, the, of, the, of the country. It's also used for the minimum wage uh, increases. It's also used for alimony, so pension alimentaire, etc., etc. So it's something which is really, really much used in sort of a daily life of the people. So people very often go on the website and try to figure out what the, this index is. The, the second use is the fact that from time to time, over time, on this very long history, there, has, there have been periods where there was a direct indexation of the wages on the inflation rate between the 50s and the 80s in France. Over the 30 years, as soon as you had more than 3% of increase in prices of the CPI, you had a direct increase in wages for all wage earners. For all wage earners. That was something done at the, at the governmental level. So, but also this led to the fact that the trade unions in a way had lost part of their uh, negotiation power because the indexation was automatic and they tended to shift part of their uh, struggle not over the negotiation but over the index itself because if if they could say if they could say some somewhere no the inflation is not 5% but it's 6% then they could get higher wages, but, but with the index, with the automatic indexation, they sort of shifted their focus from the negotiation to the index measurement uh, issue, the sort of black box of how measurement is, uh, is, is done. Yes, please. Yeah, in Belgium, it's, yeah, it's, it's regarded as being the major device of the social state. So Belgium is still uh, sort of one of the heroic her countries that has uh, uh, um, uh, still this, in this automatic indexation. But it's not the case anymore in France, 
We had the retirement, for instance, until Macron arrived at the presidency, uh, that were directly indexed on the, on the inflation, but it's not the case anymore. So you have a sort of, a, of impoverishment of, uh, of, of, many, of many categories because of, this, um, of, of, this because of that. But it's not the... Yeah, please? No, it was, uh, oh, that's a good question. It, it might have been twice a year. It was not every month, no, no. But, but that, that's, uh, b between the 50s and the, and, and the 80s, when it stopped, it's what we call the 80s uh, uh, turning point in, in a way. Uh, it, we had an inflation uh, rate, let's say from, uh, from 6 to 13% per year. So we, we, it, it had to be more than th five and then more than 3% to, to, to have this indexation. So it was not more than twice, uh, twice a year, okay? Uh, then it's also used for the, uh, uh, for the uh, central, ba central banks. It's their major indicator. <laughs> I mean, inflation is their major indicator because normally, until today, <laughs> The, uh, the, the inflation um, maintaining was their, was their main aim and, their, and for the, the European Central Bank the only aim compared to other central banks where unemployment is also sometimes being regarded as an aim. And so it's sort of, inflation was their sort of a performance indicator. Either you maintain inflation around 2% or you fail. So the, C, the, the central bank phase <laughs> and should probably, okay. And it's also used, which is the reason why I, I, I focused on this in my own research perspective and process. It's also used as a, as a deflator for the GDP to calculate growth. So everything I'm, I'm telling you concerning inflation, the fact that it is a, a social construct means that growth is also a social construct because you divide the value of GDP by something which is a GDP deflator, and see the CPI represents more or less 70 to 80% of this deflator. So when, you, when I speak about the fights, struggles, conflicts concerning inflation, I should always add there are fights, struggles, conflicts over the way we calculate growth, okay? As you know, but maybe it's better to write it down. I didn't want to put any equation. Growth is, reg is regarded as uh, the variation of, uh, of GDP in value. And, 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 and you have a sort of a deflator. And this deflator is, let's say, 80, 70 to 80% 80 is, uh, is made of the CPI. Okay, and the rest is, uh, the, 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 is the, the, the variation of price of the investment and variation of price of uh, export minus import. So, so, it's, so it means that it is important and, and you have a direct link between the two. And Aguillon, for instance, Philippe Aguillon, uh, insists very much of the, uh, on, 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 on these two uh, aspects. So there is, because of these multiple uses, there is sort of a, uh, some uh, feverishness, some fébrilité, uh, for those who speak French, even under a low inflation regime, which is something which surprised me very much when I entered this question. I did not know how, yeah, how s this feverishness was very important and I had difficulties at the beginning to, to conduct my, my interviews with the people who were at the head of the department making, constructing the prices, because they, they said, no, but uh, concerning the price measurement and inflation measurement, there has never been any controversy. They always started my discussion this way. And after 10 minutes, 15 minutes, etc., and they were telling me the whole story. And obviously, during this, uh, s these uh, interviews I conducted, I made more than 30 interviews. Uh, the, the most interesting part was uh, doing this interview, conducting these interviews with the people who were retired because they were completely free and they had some, some freedom of, of thought also. Less loyalty concerning the institution than those who are still uh, there. And, and also uh, more reflexivity on which we could come back later. 
And, and last point, which explains also the feverishness, is the fact that the a large part of the legitimacy of these national statistics rely on the legitimacy of the inflation measurement. And this is something very important. The legitimacy of INSEE relies on the legitimacy of the measurement of inflation. Why? Because of these multiple use, first, and because inflation is also a sort of a measurement of the confidence you have in the money. And money is sort of the, of the national, um, it, it expresses a sort of a national uh, sovereignty in, in a way. So, so there are, th there are very, there are links between, uh, between the confidence in the money, the, the measurement of inflation and it's, it's the trend of inflation and the legitimacy of the, of the INSEE. And this is also true for all countries. So that was the first reason why there are conflicts, because there are multiple uses and the uses are not, uh, are not in the interest of, of, of all people in the same way, of all actors in the same way. The second one is the fact that there is, a, there is a, to my point of view, a destabilization of price reference systems. And there has been, or there have been destabilizations over time of price reference systems. Why? Because we are not under the Fordist regime anymore. I think if I could speak to you this way, it's straightforward for you, you understand what I mean. Mass production, mass consumption, etc., etc., standardization of products. This is not true anymore, as you know. But, but, but the, the structural transformation of production regime has direct consequences on the difficulties of capturing price and, and of understanding what price means and what price is supposed to express. Why? So let me give you some of the reasons. First, one of the spectacular transformation of the industry has been towards services. As you know, we have all today more than 80% of GDP is made of services. More than 75% of, of employment is made of, G, of, of, of services. And in the tertiary sector, in the service sector, there is a sort of idiosyncrasy, means, which, which means that there is no standardization anymore. Of course, in the McDonald's, standardization is possible. Of course, in the call centers, standardization is possible. But in many, many service industries, you cannot uh, claim for a, a, a pure standardization of the process and of the products and of the service. And there is a sort of a loss of reference points in the physical numbers. You knew what, uh, what was the price of a ton of, uh, of fuel, a ton of, uh, uh, even of, of, of a kilo of computer, let's, say, let's put it this way. But how d what does cost uh, uh, one, one unit of leisure one unit of consulting, one unit, we don't even know what a unit means in the services. So this is something which is really tricky and which uh, sort of destabilize at the same time our price reference system as consumer, but also the way the, the national uh, uh, statistics try to capture the price variation. Second, there are permanent innovations. So innovation uh, uh, regarded as technical change. I have no, uh, no tropism concerning uh, uh, the, the, the technical innovation uh, to my point of view. And there are new or modified products. And as I was telling you earlier, the, the, the basic thing to measure inflation is to have a fixed basket of goods and services. So if you have permanent innovation, if you, if you have all the time new or modified product in your basket, this is a really a big, big challenge for the national statistics. And it's still, it is still a big challenge. I don't say that they don't, they cannot try to figure out how to do, but they have d many difficulties in, in, in capturing the variation of price. We also have more and more coordination by quality instead of, uh, of, 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 uh, of uh, coordination by price. And the variation, the treatment of quality is something really conventional in the way the national statistics try, or the official statistics try to, to, to only take the variation of price in the composition of a basket of goods and services. So it's, uh, 
uh, everything uh, otherwise equal, not only concerning the variation of quantity, but also concerning the variation of quality. In the basket of goods that you follow over time, you should only have the variation of price that you try to capture. Not the variation of quantity, nor the variation of quality. And you also have something which is quite interesting to, figure, to, to, to stress on, is the fact that we also have more and more, especially services, that are um, conducted under the idea of yield management, the, 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 um, the, 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 the yield management is, is, is the fact that the price may vary even uh, the price of, of, of a service may vary over time, even during the same day. So, for instance, for the, uh, for, for the air traffic, for, the, for any transportation, for the Uber, sometimes you may ask for, at, at a certain period of time, you may have a price, and, and two hours later, you may have another one. Obviously, the national statistics does not have the means to capture correctly the variation when it is done not on a monthly, monthly period or, or when it's done on an, on an infra-daily uh, um, uh, uh, step. Why? Okay. The third, the third factor that may explain uh, the struggles is the inequality issue. As I was telling you earlier, when I presented you the, the shift of, and the reforms over time concerning the focus on the blue color to the, to the focus of the, on the uh, average consumer, the, but it's, it may be also true for GDP and growth. Um, this, this indicator, the, measure, the inflation, is a good indicator for society that set equality as a common goal. It's a bit strong to put it this way, but still. If you say, okay, let's uh, make a measurement for the, the average consumer, it means that the average consumer should speak to everyone or to anyone. And here, we shift it from the blue color worker to the average consumer, and now we have only singular consumers. I mean, we have huge inequalities, social and economic inequalities, but we also have variation in the consuming patterns uh, concerning uh, uh, more differences than only social classes between the youth and the, the, the older, between rural and urban, between etc. etc. And this means that, uh, and, and this has consequences concerning the fact that it's com more complicated to uh, to measure, uh, to, to, to express something by using the mean uh, inflation. So let me just give you the example of the rent. The rent in the basket of goods and services that is used to measure inflation only represents 6% of the total expenses. So between brackets, uh, you as students, the statistics say that you consume half of your total expenses in the rent. So it's not totally full, it's not completely silly if, if you don't, and if you don't, um, if, if inflation doesn't express anything for you. It would be so if the rent, the price of rents was uh, was uh, evolving at the rate of the inflation, mean inflation, which is not the case. Why? Because we are under a financial capitalism. And the financial capitalism also sort of um, increased the speculation over the, over the houses, and this has consequences on the rents. And obviously the rents, the rate, the rate of rent uh, increases far, higher, far faster than the rate of inflation. So 6% in the basket of goods and services, so 6% is the budgetary coefficient for the rent. Why? Why is it so? Why is it so low? First, here the rent doesn't ta does take into account only the rent for itself. If you 
take account of all the expenses around the rent, which means uh, the, 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 the heat, uh, the electricity, uh, the energy, and also the equipment of the house, it, it, it reaches 10 or 12%, so it's far more. But still, still 12%, it's twice less than the official uh, budgetary coefficient. So why? The reason given by the national statistics is the fact that we do not take account of the people who are owners of their own house. We only take account of the share of the population and of the household who are renters, who rent their, their house. S and half of the French people are owners. So you can divide by two the budget coefficient because you don't take into account the people who are, who are owners. And, and we do not take into consideration what could be done, which is the imputed rent. It's done in the national accounts, but not for the, for the CPI. And half of the households are the home, home, uh, home owners. So as I was saying, it's really, it becomes a problem when there is a clear increase in the relative prices of rents because of the financial capitalism and, and speculation. And I give you an example concerning France. The CPI, sorry, the CPI has increased of 12% over the period, the official CPI has increased of 12% over the period 2010 and 2020. And the rents has increased of 22%. So obviously this also pulls downward the, the, the average inflation rate because of these uh, sort of uh, convention choices that have, that have been made. The main idea behind is the fact that um, is, is the fact that uh, uh, consumer invest in the house and don't consume the house. And the CPI is a consumer price index. So this is a sort of a economic uh, idea and or reason which is given, but it's not always, I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's uh, a geometry variable, this, this explanation. So third point, third, third and last point, a cohabitation of two logics, which is my four factor. Yeah. Why? Okay. Ten, ten more minutes. Okay, okay. Cohabitations of two logic: a redistributive logic and a representation of what counts, of what matters. There is a, a, a direct redistributive logic depending on the institution arrangement, uh, institutional arrangements in place. So, as I was telling you earlier. The example of what happened with the CGT trade unions is very, very interesting. Because between 72, 1972 and 1998, these trade unions built it its own index. And what is more interesting, its index was directly used in collective bargaining when the trade union was... Uh, was uh, um, was strong enough. So, for instance, in uh, metallurgy, sorry, I don't know the name in English, but in some very, very blue colors, a very intensive, uh, 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 in intense labor uh, sectors where the CGT was very present, very dominant, uh, this uh, alternative index was used. So, it's, it's you know, ev every month it, it produced this index. In, 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 the, in, in, their, in their paper called Le Pop, and every month they were producing uh, their, their price index, in this Depris, price index, and, and showing very seriously. It was a sort of an alternative uh, uh, production uh, 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 versus the national statistics, and producing this. And there were two main differences between what was doing the INSEE and what was doing the CGT. First, the weight of the products, and second, the treatment of quality. It will go very fast. Concerning the weight and the composition, one thing is very striking, is the fact that they doubled the weight of the housing, for the reasons I told you earlier. But that was in the 70s. Right? That was in the 70s, already in the 70s. So the, we should say CGT, the CGT should contest today on the same way that it used to do it, but it doesn't do it anymore. So essentially, there is a, a, a double weight given to the rent houses and, and expenditures around the houses. 
and a very smaller rate concerning other services, and other services mean essentially leisure. And the second, uh, uh, and the second uh, element, which is very interesting, I, I haven't talken, uh, talked to you about that uh, uh, until then. As I told you, this basket of goods and services must be of even quality over time. But quality changes. So when, in the price evolution, the insect can, can explain the fact that this evolution is not linked to inflation but linked to the quality increase, then the insect will pretend or will say that there, there has been no inflation. They may say that, for instance, if you have 10% of increase in a computer, it may say, yes, but all this increase is due to a quality variation and not a price variation. And then, INSEE will register no price increase. So it's, it's important. And what did the CGT say? It said, we don't want any treatment in the quality because, because workers... Um, uh, the, the, the quality is imposed to consumers. It's not a choice. For instance, in your computers, well, at that time they were not discussing the computer issue, but in your computer, how much of all the quality do you use yourself? How, how I would say to myself, I would say 10% probably of my computer, 10%. But I have paid for 100% for, for of quality increase. And from, from the INSEE side, it says the consumer is, is sovereign, so if he buys something, it's because he will use it and he wants it. And the CGT was saying quality is not chosen, it's something that is imposed to people and consumer. So it, 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 uh, it had a very, very high consequences because in the first years of, uh, of production in the 70s, there was a, a gap of 3 to 4% per year of difference between the national uh, inflation and the CGT inflation. So over six years, for instance, it means 26% more of what? Of purchasing power. 26% more of purchasing power for those who could negotiate, not an increase of wage with the national statistics, but an increase of ways using the CGT uh, index. No, you don't know you understand what I'm saying. If you have every each year from three to point percent to four percent more over six years, it makes it it means twenty six percent more of more than than the, than the than what you might have uh, got gotten uh, using the. Uh, using the, uh, the, the national, uh, the, the official uh, index. And then in the, in the 80s, it was only from 1 to 3% per year uh, of gap. And then from the 80s to 90s, when, when they stopped, there, was, there were almost no gap, no difference between the national index and the, the official index and the CGT index. So they, they decided to stop using it at that period of time. And again, I can explain you why later. Um, maybe I can say one thing and then I finish. Okay, one thing, you, you, you told me I have two minutes left. Um, okay, two minutes, two minutes. Let me, let me finish on this, let me finish on one point. J'ai 45 minutes sur mon écran, mais peut-être j'ai commencé avant. OK. So, last thing I want to, to tell you is uh, you, you, may, you may think that concerning this redistribution effect, they are, uh, uh, I, I may interpret it in, a, in an excessive way, in a way. So, what is interesting is that in the year 2008, there has been a report produced by two economists, French economist Moati, you may know him, he may know yes, him. Professor here, he's professor here, Philippe Moati and Rochefort. Yeah. And, and they, they produced a very interesting uh, um, a report on the measurement of purchasing power. And this report has been published after the introduction of Euro, which was a period of time where there was a lack of confidence in the measurement of inflation. So all these are linked. 
And after, at the end of this report, um, um, uh, um, some economists were invited to react to the report. And among them, there was this uh, Del Pla, which, who, is a, 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 who was a banker at that time, and he was replying to the possibility of a wider spectrum of price indexes, the idea that we may use an index for the, uh, for the negotiation of wages, an index for the deflator of, of, of inflation, etc., etc. And Del Pla says this, he says, does the government really want that the ECB takes into account for its monetary policy price index showing an inflation significantly higher than the current CPI? Such an index showing a higher inflation would require a reappraisal of minimum subsistence allowances and of social benefits. So it's really direct. It means that he doesn't want to do that and he says we should be careful on reforms of inflation if these reforms should take the sort of inflation at, at a higher level because of this, uh, of this consequence. And he says then, if the ONS was to publish several price index showing a higher inflation, the demands for a reappraisal of, for social benefits and for minimum subsistence allowances would worsen the public deficits. So this is quite interesting to, 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 to note. Okay. I have, no, I have no time to, to say something concerning what matters, but probably it, I hope it will come during the discussion. I just to conclude, and this is really my, my unique slide of conclusion, I just want to insist on, 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 on different things. To my point of view, if you want to, I don't know among you who want to do some research and who does not, I guess some of you may do some research, I sort of uh, constructed the framework to try to, 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 to understand this question of issues concerning the measurement of macroeconomic indicators. And I think that there are different uh, regulation regimes or even institutions that have to be taken into account. <coughs> One, the, the regulation space. The second, the socio-technical conditions of the measurement. Third, the evolution of the competitive regime and production regime. And fourth, the evolution of the regime of ideas. And I really think that we have to gather all this idea together if we want to understand something of what is happening concerning the measurement evolution, the measurement reforms. And if we don't take this sort of a, say, a, a socio-economical, re regulationary, conventionary uh, framework, we probably miss what is the most important. And let me just focus on one the evolution of the regime ideas. I interviewed a few uh, trade unioners, and one told me this. He said, you know, in the 50s, probably there were at the INSEE uh, 150 Marxists. Today, if there is one Canadian, it's at most. Okay, thank you. <laughs>